The day begins in Madrid, with people going about their usual routines. Sergio, a salesman, makes a call to a client while Israel, a homeless man, is forced to leave the streets by the police once again. Trini, struggling with a gambling addiction, asks the grocer to add today's expenses to her tab, and Elena excitedly talks to her friend about an upcoming date with someone she met online. When Elena's phone dies, she decides to enter a nearby bar for a coffee and ask the employee, Satter, if he has a charger she can borrow. Inside, a sick man rushes to the bathroom, irritating the owner, Amparo. Israel also enters, knowing he can get a free meal, much to the annoyance of the other patrons, including a bank clerk, a street cleaner, and former cop Andres. Nacho, unfazed by the chaos, remains immersed in his music with headphones on. As Sergio and Trini enter the bar, Trini eagerly spends her remaining money on the slot machine. When the bank clerk grows impatient and leaves the bar, he is suddenly shot outside. Panic erupts among the patrons as they realize what has happened. With no way to call for help, the group inside the bar must confront the uncertain situation that awaits them outside. Unfortunately, as he attends to the wounded bank clerk, he too falls victim to the assailant's bullet. Amidst the chaos, Israel, unfazed, continues his biblical quotations while the others panic and instinctively take cover on the floor. Despite his desire to depart for church, Israel is persuaded by Amparo's offer of more food and a promise to speak with the priest later. As tensions mount, Trini cautiously reaches for the remote and switches on the television. However, their apprehension grows as they discover a peculiar absence of news coverage regarding the recent deaths on the streets of Madrid. This alarming discovery fuels heated discussions among the group. Meanwhile, Trini notices something even more unsettling outside. The bodies have vanished without a trace, leaving behind no evidence of the violent events that transpired. Perplexed by the lack of investigation into the disappearances, the group attempts to distract themselves by watching television and engaging in conversation while they await assistance. As the bewildering situation unfolds, Satter's imagination runs wild with outlandish theories, pondering whether they are trapped in a dream or abducted by extraterrestrials or government agents. Amparo's stern slap brings him back to reality, prompting the group to focus on assessing the facts. Elena suggests a potential connection between the victims, but the notion of a street cleaner and a bank clerk being linked seems improbable. In contrast, Sergio offers a thought-provoking hypothesis. Perhaps the perpetrator isn't a criminal at all, but rather a law enforcement officer. According to Sergio's theory, the police received intelligence suggesting the presence of a high-profile criminal inside the bar. Unable to discern the suspect's identity, they resort to shooting anyone who exits. This explanation would also account for the absence of a police intervention despite the area being evacuated. As the group talks about Sergio's convincing idea, Nacho hides his bag before anyone notices, but his strange actions are still seen. Sergio and Andres grab Nacho while Satter takes the bag, but he's unsure if he should open it. Amparo decides to check it herself and finds clothes and a hard disk. Even though Nacho says it's just stuff for his job, everyone starts to argue about what to do with it. Elena, disillusioned with the group's fixation on conjecture, takes matters into her own hands, destroying the hard disk in a fit of frustration. However, Nacho, feeling unjustly targeted, redirects suspicion towards Sergio's suitcase, sparking a physical altercation. In the ensuing chaos, Israel seizes the opportunity to pilfer the suitcase, only to discover it contains lingerie, revealing Sergio's trade. Amid all the noise and confusion, a sound comes from the bathroom, getting everyone's attention. They quickly go to the bathroom to see what's making the noise. Andres swiftly opens the door with his gun, exposing the sick man inside, who appears ill and is surrounded by odd objects, including a syringe. Just then, another disruption from outside further complicates their already chaotic situation, adding to the confusion and uncertainty. A truck carrying special agents arrives, but they ignore the group's pleas for help. Instead, they pile up tires outside the bar and start a fire. The thick smoke is visible on TV, reported as a big fire in Madrid. The group realizes the government is using it to hide the killings. The sick man emerges from the bathroom in a terrible state. He drops his phone, warning them not to touch him before collapsing and dying. Nacho takes the man's phone and finds out he is in the military, working in Africa. They see pictures of men in hazmat suits, realizing the man brought a deadly disease with him. Now understanding the danger they're in, everyone tries to keep themselves occupied while waiting for help. Israel prepares the sick man for funeral prayers. Elena and Nacho have the sick man's phone with only 10% battery left. 
they decide to try to find a signal. Nacho manages to do it by standing on a chair near a higher part of the bar ceiling. He calls a co-worker to explain the TV report is false. However, Satter, feeling urgent, grabs the phone and desperately yells for help, but their co-worker hangs up, thinking it's a prank. Nacho and the other man bicker over the phone's battery, which escalates into a tussle, causing chaos and pushing everyone around. Trini accidentally triggers the slot machine, leading to a cascade of coins that Israel eagerly collects. Andres wants his turn with the phone next, but Amparo warns him against it, citing its connection to the sick man. She insists on keeping a distance from anyone who had contact with him, prompting Andres and Sergio to retreat behind the counter with her. Elena questions the need for such stringent precautions, given their prolonged proximity, but Andres remains resolute, using his gun to drive home his point. Reluctantly, the group agrees to relocate to the storeroom, where tensions escalate as Trini grapples with claustrophobia, prompting a frantic bid for escape. In her panicked frenzy, she inadvertently knocks over a box of bottles, revealing a concealed drain beneath them. Upon opening the lid, they find the drain connects to the sewers but isn't very deep. Israel bravely volunteers to descend into it, shedding his clothes and valuables before coating himself in oil to ease his passage. Despite the group's efforts to assist him, Israel becomes stuck in the narrow space, helpless. Their predicament worsens as gunshots ring out upstairs, indicating an attack on Amparo, Andres, and Sergio. Simultaneously, rising temperatures and smoke signal a fire raging within the bar, threatening to suffocate them all. In a desperate bid for survival, Elena, Nacho, and Satter unite to free Israel from the drain, allowing fresh air to filter in from the sewers. As Trini grapples with another anxiety attack, she injures her hands while attempting to open the door, suffering burns in the process. The group tends to her injuries with oil and makeshift bandages, awaiting a moment of respite. With the sounds of violence subsiding, Nacho cautiously opens the door, revealing a charred interior devoid of bodies. The door, however, is sealed shut by agents, concealing their view of the unfolding chaos. As tensions mount, Nacho discovers Andre's gun and conceals it, despite the searing heat from the metal burning his skin. Trini's impulse to seek help outside is swiftly quashed by Nacho, who emphasizes the danger of exposing themselves to potential harm. Despite their unease, none of them exhibit symptoms of illness, leading Nacho to suggest laying low until the incident blows over, given the ample supplies in the storeroom. A sudden noise rattles the group, but it's merely the sick man's phone, inundated with messages. Elena investigates and uncovers alarming details. The man had been ill for days and was being pursued. Desperate, he sought refuge in the bar to administer a stolen experimental serum covertly. While unsuccessful for him, the group remains symptom-free, sparking hope that the serum could work for them. As the phone rings, Nacho hesitates to answer, fearing a trap, but deliberation drains the battery. Satter rushes upstairs in search of a charger while Elena recalls a cryptic message mentioning, four doses left. The group searches the body and then the bathroom, where Israel discovers the remaining syringes, relishing his newfound control over the group. With only four doses for five people, tensions escalate as they debate their next move. In a decisive yet selfish act, Israel injects himself, anticipating his potential exclusion from the group's decision-making process. Nacho refrains from firing the gun, realizing the risk of attracting attention from the police outside, opting instead to engage in a physical altercation with Israel. Despite his efforts, Israel gains the upper hand and seizes control of the gun. Satter's attempt to retrieve the syringes is met with a violent response from Israel, causing the box to tumble into the storeroom. Trini, driven by urgency, rushes to retrieve the box, but her bandaged hands hinder her coordination, leading to an accidental drop into the sewers. With no one else fitting through the narrow opening, Elena reluctantly volunteers for the task. After coating herself with oil, she squeezes through the hole despite enduring pain and injury. Despite recovering the syringes, Elena refuses to hand them over, wary of the group's intentions. Determined not to succumb to their selfishness, she refuses to use a syringe on herself and challenges the group to engage in a fair discussion. As the group enlarges the hole, Elena explores further, discovering a storm drain and concealing the syringes for safekeeping. Meanwhile, outside, special agents and police continue their operations, attending to the bodies retrieved from the bar. Returning to the storeroom hole, Elena discovers that the men have already emerged and are assisting Trini, whose panicked movements cause a chaotic tumble into the water. While Satter and Trini manage to escape unscathed, 
Nacho seizes the opportunity to confront Israel in a bid to reclaim the gun. An intense underwater struggle ensues, punctuated by gunfire, culminating in Nacho emerging victorious, claiming that Israel was the one who fired the shots before disappearing into the water. Believing Nacho to have killed Israel, who grows increasingly aggressive, the group is shaken. Frustrated by the escalating chaos, Elena implores Nacho to discard the gun if they wish to access the syringes. Ignoring her plea, Nacho instead threatens Satter's life, leaving Elena with no choice but to lead them to the hidden wall from earlier. As they navigate the tunnels, Trini cleverly utilizes the bag of coins pilfered from Israel to mark their path, ensuring they can find their way back. However, when they encounter a dark tunnel, Trini feigns distress, falsely accusing Satter of pushing her into the water while she, in reality, forcibly submerges him. Under the guise of assisting Satter, Trini ruthlessly attempts to drown him. Nacho, alerted by the commotion, fires a shot to illuminate the darkness and discovers Trini's treachery. Swiftly intervening, Nacho plunges into the water to rescue Satter. Maintaining a cautious vigilance, they advance through a tunnel illuminated by faint light, holding Trini at gunpoint. Despite the gravity of the situation, Nacho hesitates to use lethal force against her, reluctant to take such drastic action. Trini reveals her aversion to being seen and seizes the gun, disappearing around a corner with intent. Meanwhile, the remaining trio locates the syringes and begins to divide them amongst themselves. However, their plans are interrupted by the sound of coins being tossed. Investigating the noise, they discover Trini's lifeless body, her eyes covered with coins, a grim sight that serves as a macabre warning. Unbeknownst to them, it's a trap, as Israel takes advantage of their distraction to fatally attack Satter. In a desperate bid for survival, Elena and Nacho flee through the labyrinthine tunnels, pursued by Israel. Their harrowing escape leads them to a set of stairs, offering a glimmer of hope for their salvation amidst the treacherous darkness. Struggling up the stairs, Alina's misstep causes her to lose her syringe, while Nacho is ensnared by Israel's grip. With no hope of escape, Nacho selflessly sacrifices himself, passing his syringe to Elena before letting go of the stairs, sending both men plummeting to their demise. Overwhelmed with grief, Elena administers the serum to herself, tears mingling with the injection. Summoning her last ounces of strength, she pushes against the manhole lid until it budges, allowing her to emerge into the unfamiliar territory beyond the containment zone. Greeted by curious onlookers, Elena is offered assistance, but her mind is consumed by the trauma she has endured. Lost in a haze of shock and grief, she stumbles past the concerned strangers, oblivious to their attempts to reach out. Unaware of the familiar face calling her name, Elena continues forward, consumed by her inner turmoil, a survivor haunted by the echoes of tragedy.